All right, I'm Jay Stone. Welcome to another episode of my show at rockmetaltalk.com. Don't forget to check me out on granitecoastentertainment.com and maximumthreshold.net. So that was Miss Crystal. Um, Andy Gerald uh, remixed that song. He did basically the track behind it, played the solo. So I'd like to welcome Miss Crystal to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Jay? Good, good. So um, this is a little bit of a departure from, you know, my normal guest. I have a lot of metal guests on the show, so... It's refreshing hmm. to have, you know, I know you have a rock background, but it's refreshing to have, you know, um, a different style artist. So I'm trying to transition a little bit. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I am go by Miss Crystal. I've, I've been doing singing and songwriting since I was probably four. Um, I kind of have a classical background with, you know, piano. I play cello, violin, and a number of other instruments. And you know what? Music is just my passion. It's absolutely, you know... My life, my blood, my air, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we just dropped our third album, which is pretty exciting. And on that album is Duke's Up, which is the uh, first track. And uh, you know, like you just kind of introduced, Andy did a great remix, and uh, you know, I think he kind of killed it. So you know, we're just pushing the record at this point and doing some shows and having a good time. So when you do shows, I mean, I'm not familiar with you know a lot of pop style music. So how do you got, go about getting a big crowd like that? I see, you know, I checked out your Facebook page. I see you have huge crowds. So you obviously have, you know, a lot of fans. How did you build that reputation? Well, I've been, I've been doing this a while, uh, you know, but, but I do have kind of a background with the rock music and it was more so because I've done pop for a long time, but for a while I had a full band. And so our show because we had, you know, multiple guitar players and the bass and the live drums. And I, I pretty much just gave creative control to my band. I, I basically said, here are my songs. Let's see what we can do to kind of, you know, make them edgier. Or and, and at the time, we were playing in a bunch of dive bars. So my show became a rock show, which is fine. And it completely fits in with the niche of what I like to do, what I like to listen to. And so I started growing a fan base based on a rock show version of my songs. And from, you know, from, from there, I finally started to kind of redevelop my act, and it became more of a DJ uh, with some live instrumentation, but it was, it was very specific with the DJ, so we could kind of keep the music true to how it was produced originally. So the album just came out July 12th. Has it been selling yeah, right. pretty good? You know, I think we just hit like three million. I could be off in my numbers, but you know what? That sounds about right. Wow, that's that's awesome. So the name of the album is. Uh, <laughs> I might be over. I might be overshooting just a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's doing well, and you know, here's the thing, Jay. Like when you when you are an up and coming artist, however you want to put it, until until your status of Katy Perry, I mean, you got to work. You you can you can highlight some of the the cool things that are happening, but you know you have to be very realistic and and it's a hustle every single day. It's a hustle whether you're submitting for you know press reviews or to try and capture new fans or booking shows. I mean it's 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 a full time job. Do you um, write most of the songs with the band? Is it a collaborative type of thing? Yeah. So at this point, uh, when I do shows, like I said, there are. Um, you know, live musicians who will come out, but right now, all the songwriting is done by myself and my co-writer, um, and he goes by that Orco. And so, for at least you know, as it pertains to this last record, uh, we put that together, and uh, and so far, you know, my fans seem to be loving it. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I'm a fan of the track, so I think you did a great job. Uh, hooking up with Andy Gerald and doing that. I mean, it sounds it sounds awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, it's great. So are are you a fan of Marilyn Manson? Because I see um, in the notes I have here that your music video was had an inspiration kind of from Marilyn Manson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, when, when I was growing up, um, I was homeschooled, a, a, you know, highly Christian uh, home, very conservative. And so, you know, as soon as I discovered Manson and a number of the other, you know, big rock acts at the time just kind of fell in love with the genre in general, but particularly Manson. I just 
when I saw him interviewing, I loved that he was able to articulate himself so well, and he was able to kind of express his art through these interviews. And, you know, so I fell in love with him as a fan at that point, and then I've listened to him and supported him, obviously, throughout the years. Uh, you know, so so the fact that, you know, I, I was able to have a former, you know, Manson member kind of do a remix, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, because that's, you know, how I found you, so... I mean, that's a great thing to have someone, you know, of Andy's status to, to work with. So, Oh, for sure. For sure. And then as it pertains to the music videos, so when we were working with the team and kind of coming up with the wardrobe, uh, there was kind of a weird fusion of worlds. So you'll see I'm wearing very, uh, Marilyn Manson-inspired white boots, um, and that's in conjunction with kind of like a Snoop Dogg a, a blue overcoat, and then I'm wearing a blue bikini underneath that so it's kind of Marilyn Manson meets Snoop Dogg meets the, the blue bikini was from when I used to compete in pageants so it was a kind of a ton in cheek um joke kind of between me and the stylist so do you come up with the concept for the video you created or oh yeah no absolutely and 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 you know I, I have an entire team that I work with as far as executing the idea but the visual is always incredibly important to me, and sometimes it's the most fun that I have, even beyond writing the music, because it's it's the point where I get to express how I was feeling, what the lyrics meant, you know, so on and so forth. So I, I always have a heavy, heavy hand in, in executing and, and developing the treatment for the video. Now, do you um, just play in the, you know, Vegas area, or do you go out on tour? Yeah, we, we do mini tours, and it'll be off the West Coast. Um, sometimes sometimes we will play in Arizona, which is our home base. But, uh, you know, we seem to, to like traveling and kind of like West Coast shows, uh, sometimes a little bit more than Arizona. Yeah, I guess, you know, as it progresses, you'll, you know, get out there and do more shows and, you know, maybe get on a Yeah, I look tour. forward to going overseas, quite frankly. Yeah, no, I would imagine it would do pretty well over there, too, so... I mean, the style of music and, you know, it's, you know, got a rock element to it. So it's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. it, now, are you backed by, you know, an independent label or is this something you, you know, put out on your own, basically? Well, I mean, I've been an independent artist for a while. Now. I've, I've signed some deals with labels in the past. Um, right now I am indie. Uh, I did start a record label and uh, <clears throat> so for any of the, the new releases that have been coming out through my label. Cool. Do you play any other instruments or just strictly singing? No, like I said, uh, you know, I, I had a early education with music. Uh, like I said, I was homeschooled. So part of my daily curriculum was that, you know, my mom would, would essentially take us and she had a classical background. So I learned piano, and that was my initial instrument. And so from there, I branched out to cello, violin, and then a couple of years ago, started messing around with guitar a little. Nice, nice. Yeah, so you're well-versed in music. So that's that's a good thing, well-rounded. I, I found that it's, it's, it's given me not only a sense of appreciation, but it's fun when you're able to work with other uh, producers or songwriters and you know if you're using specific music lingo sometimes it's an easier way just to communicate with each other right and it gives different influences to the music so it's not just one you know one style you you know you have a diverse background so it makes the music more interesting sure now, you hope <laughs> yeah no really you do hope you know you, you know as an artist you know it's hard to know what people are gonna listen to out there so that's why i wanted to kind of introduce you know you to the show and you know maybe some of your fans will find some of the music on this show and vice versa so that's usually how the promotion you know the promotion train works so right i see here you know uh you're a vegan for four years now um is that something that was difficult to transition to transition to so I don't know really much about, you know, how to go about that. I always found it interesting. The, the transition to veganism is incredibly difficult. And for anybody who, I guess, you know, is, is interested in trying it or, or wants to transition, I mean, it, it takes a while. Truthfully, it probably took me about two years where, you know, I wasn't cheating on something or, 
you know, had some excuse of why I didn't want to make the full transition because there's a lot of that goes into it besides maybe feeling socially awkward when you go to parties or you go to dinners or, uh, but also just having kind of that certainty that you, you know what you want to eat, that you're happy with what you eat. And it's kind of, you reteach yourself about food, nutrition and, and, you know, what works for you. And I mean, you know, the reason with me anyway, I initially started kind of going that direction because I was having such severe health issues. I just, all through college, I was having the most difficult time even getting out of bed. You know, and I was a full-time student. I was competing in, in you know, uh, ballroom dancing. And so that was very frustrating. And my quality of life was, you know, kind of in the toilet. And so after pretty much two years that I refer to as the blackout <laughs> phase of my life, I just started cutting things really dramatically out of my diet and just trying everything I could think of. I went to every type of doctor, uh, every kind of specialist. No one could figure out what was going on. And, and it was kind of crazy because as soon as I tried this whole vegan thing, which at the time seemed so crazy, uh, within a week I was feeling absolutely fine. And, uh, and so from that point on, my life changed and it was, it was kind of a no brainer. And, and, you know, I, I made the transition. Right, because I would imagine, you know, it's hard to, you know, when you first try to figure out what you're going to eat, it's hard to not go to those things. And But I notice, you know, as a musician, not a lot of people educate people on, you know, on food. And I see that, you know, you promote on your Facebook. 